Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead on another Top 5 Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the five records you should be keeping on all of your livestock. Um, primarily this is going to be stuff like rabbits, goats, chickens, ducks, uh, dogs, maybe not ducks, um, but any of your big livestock. And then I'll kind of mention the stuff that you should probably also be keeping if you're raising some kind of poultry. So the first thing that you need to keep a record of is date of birth. Um, of course, if you bought something uh, at an auction or something like that, you may not have one, but a rough guesstimate of what age they actually are is pretty important. Um, too often on a farm, especially if we've got a lot going on or on a homestead, we can kind of lose track of who's how old. And I tell people all the time that some of the dogs are three and four and they're actually five and six. So it's important to have that written down somewhere um, not only to know when to start breeding, if it's an animal that you're going to be breeding, but also to know when to stop breeding. And there's just changes in care that go on in some things, um, particularly like in our LGDs, we start them on a senior food at a certain age. Uh, they roll from a puppy food into an adult food at a certain age. And that goes the same for our goats. Um, as youngsters, they might get some extra grain that they don't get as they get older. So it's good to have a date of birth somewhere or a rough estimate of what the date of birth is just so you can kind of tailor your care on that animal. So the second thing you want to be keeping track of is things like vaccinations and worming. Um, even if you're not really into the whole worming and vaccination thing, it's a good idea to write down and keep track of the stuff that you are keeping track of. Uh, particularly on our goats, we only do them once or twice a year as far as actual worming. Um, most of the herd doesn't actually get any vaccinations or anything like that, but we've been more finicky about making sure the dogs are wormed on time or dewormed. Um, you know, just some of that kind of stuff. I also like to keep track of what I'm doing in the rabbits. Usually every spring I go ahead and do an Ivamec treatment uh, to deal with any potential fur mites, ear mites, that sort of thing. So it's a good thing to have written down. So number three is going to be your other health records. This is going to be stuff like um, if you've dehorned a goat, if you've weathered a goat, um, somebody pulled a toenail. Uh, on the rabbits in particular, I go ahead and keep um, toenail schedules written down as part of the health record because um, it does make a difference. Um, if you've treated for something like an actual, you know, parasite problem, um, this is also, you know, it, it's also a good time to write down things like weights, stuff that you're going to keep track of that maybe you're not going to do every single time or not on s quite the schedule that the vaccination and worming stuff is. Um, but it's good to have an individual record to know what you've done and when. So number four is going to be breeding records. And when I talk breeding records, it's not just a matter of I bred this doe on this time and she had this many babies. I, I go to a little bit more in depth. I want to know um, if my doe has had triplets, how many were boys, how many were girls, and did they make it all the way to weaning? Uh, sometimes, you know, you'll get a, a baby that, a little kid that makes it a couple weeks and then for whatever reason fails. Uh, and the rabbits in particular, we may have a litter of 10, but we might only get four that makes it to weaning. The reason this is important is so that you can kind of track not only what your females are producing, but look for trends on what your males are producing because this does make a difference and it is half of the genetic equation. So if you've got good records written down, you can say, okay, well, Bob the goat over here throws triplets every single time, but half of them don't ever make it to weaning. So maybe this isn't a good breeding goat to have down the road. So it's, it's a good thing to keep all your breeding records. Uh, you don't necessarily have to pull weights as babies some of your bigger livestock that's more important, like cattle. Um, I know a lot of people who do it in goats. I've never bothered, but it is at least good to have the number and sex of the offspring to kind of look for trends. So the last thing you should be keeping is ancestry. And I, I know a lot of people are like, I don't do purebred anything, so it doesn't really matter. And that's fine. The reason you want to keep some kind of notation is eventually at some point, if you breed anything long enough, you will end up keeping male or female stock back. 
while line breeding is not a big deal, and one of these days I'll do a video talking about line breeding versus inbreeding, um, while line breeding in and of itself is not necessarily a bad idea, it should only be done if you're doing it for a set purpose. Um, just in, you know, crossing brother to sister for no particular reason, it's not a real good idea. So if you've got it written down at least to say, because um, we start with all mutts ourselves, but I kept enough records to know three generations in uh, who came from where. And so I can make better breeding decisions, um, especially if you start with some crossbreeds and you're sure, sure, shooting, ah, <laughs> shooting for a certain size or a certain attribute. Um, you know, if you can look back and say, well, three generations when I started, I had this and this is not what I'm looking for. You probably don't want to be crossing this animal back in so tightly with that, that, you know, animal that had the characteristics you weren't looking for. Okay, so that's your top five records you should be keeping on all of your livestock. Now, I did mention that you should probably be keeping some of this on your poultry, particularly um, if you're breeding a lot of stuff, you might want to keep a note on some ancestry. Um, I do at least on my roosters, and I don't hold a lot of hens back from those lines just so that I don't breed too tight and start um, having any kind of problems and start breeding outside, um, you know, attributes that, that are outside the breeds that I'm working in. Uh, the other thing in poultry that you want to make sure you keep an eye on is their ages. Now, I know if you've bought chicks or bought birds from somebody else, you may not have a good hatch date, but it's important to at least know uh, what kind of, of date you have because birds are only going to be fertile and really productive for a certain length of time. It kind of varies per species, um, but knowing how old they are at least will give you an idea. We keep our dates by flock because I tend to put my flocks together uh, when I buy them. So I'll have hens of an all of a certain age and a rooster of a certain age. And I try not to mix a lot of outside animals into that flock so that I don't get any confusion as to how old the flock is. That way when I go to cull a flock out to replace it, I can just do the whole flock and move on. You don't have a lot of, you know, especially if you're doing purebred birds, they all look the same. <laughs> You can use leg bands and things like that, but really they all look the same. The other thing you want to keep an eye on on birds, now you don't do a lot of vaccinations in birds, but uh, at least for us in the down season when everybody's not laying, I do go ahead and run through a, a deworming protocol just to make sure that everybody's healthy. So you do want to make note of that, or if you're doing anything else, like some people boost protein in the fall to help with feather reproduction, um, you know, as we molt, and we start coming back, a lot of people start supplement trying to get those feathers to grow in any faster. Scientifically, you really can't rush a molt, but a lot of people try. There's a lot of uh, farmer's tales on what works and what doesn't. So if you're doing any of that kind of stuff, you might want to go ahead and make a note of that as well. And I also tend to make, again, I do all my birds by flock, but I do make notes on production. So if I've got a group, we tend to run two flocks of every breed. So if flock A of say my blue slate turkeys is producing eggs, but we're not getting hatch rates and you know, flock B is getting good hatch rates, it might be time to retire flock A and start over. So I know again, it's hard, especially in birds because they lay in the nest and you don't always know whose eggs are what. Um, if you have your flock set up in a, in a way that you can at least track production based on flock numbers, uh, Hey, that's at least something. All right, so that's your top five. That's it. Um, if you've got questions, comments, anything like that, leave it down below. Um, I will be doing a video coming up specifically on the records that I keep for my rabbits. Because, I, of course, I do purebred pedigreed rabbits, so you're going to get slightly different records. And I'll show you the computer system that I use as well as the old paper notebook that I used to use. <laughs> yes, dog. Um, if you want to track some of this stuff with a good computer program, we'll talk about this coming up. But the one that I use is called Kintrax. It's like 20 bucks to fully turn it all on. Uh, you can do health records, ancestry, all sorts of great stuff. Um, so you might want to check that out. Again, I'm going to talk about it in that record keeping video that we've got coming up. So that's everything today from, home, from Spring River Homestead. If I could just talk. <laughs>
Happy homesteading. Thank you.